Good evening, parents, grandparents, family members, friends, Superintendent Bernard, Chairman Buckley, members of the North Reading School Committee, North Reading High School faculty, and most importantly, members of the class of 2019. What a great night, and a, a great night for a number of reasons. As principal, it is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome you to the 62nd commencement exercises for North Reading High School. Members of the class of 2019, you have distinguished yourselves as a group of graduates who have created, collaborated, explored, and excelled. You have also maintained a tradition of senior leadership that has long characterized this high school. I'm proud to have served as your principal, and I'm grateful that you have embraced the core values of this school as you begin the next step in your journey. Your commitment to citizenship is commendable, and your dedication to leadership through service should be celebrated. But as I reference lifelong learning this evening, I want to remind you that of these three pillars, it is this one that will likely impact your future the most. You've come a long way, but again, your journey is just beginning. You've learned so much, and there are many metrics we can look at to confirm this. But again, here you are, about to embark on the next great leg of your journey, and I posit that there are, in fact, three bags you'll be taking with you, your luggage, if you will. I'm hopeful that as graduates, you can move forward with a dedicated philosophy that allows you to commit one bag that you've always known to that which you hold dear, that which is sewn into your character and will direct you in life. A second bag in which you keep the capacity to recall easily what you have newly learned. This will keep you active in your work. And a third bag I ask you to store the awareness to acknowledge those things that you do not know. Having the wherewithal and the sense to know what you don't know will allow you to grow and to improve and to gain access to more choices. A lifelong learner is on a journey, and all of us in attendance want you to be ready for yours. And if you'll allow me to extend this analogy a bit further, not a great leap, I know, I'd like to take a moment and share a bit about a journey taken earlier this year by students in the high school, many of them seated to my left. I had the absolute pleasure of joining 42 students this past April through the countries of Hungary, Slovenia, and Croatia. And needless to say, the trip required an immense amount of planning and a huge thanks to Mr. Nosi, Mr. Votto, and the other chaperones. Multiple flights, hotels, phone numbers, bus accommodations, tour guides, packing lists. These are a few of the knowns that we covered in parent meetings, PowerPoint presentations, letters home, other email communications. The planning was comprehensive to say the least. We had our three bags packed, our bag with our character, our bag with new knowledge, and our bag of what we knew we didn't know, but we were hoping to find out. There were nine, three countries in nine days. Of course, we had all these things jammed into one larger bag, except, of course, Mr. Votto. He had the contents of all three bags stuffed into his back pocket. In fact, I don't recall him carrying a single item of luggage during the whole trip. But anyway, Mr. Votto and Mr. Nosi had this trip planned down to the minute. They had the landing times, the bus arrivals and departures, tour durations. We were on a schedule. And to accentuate this devotion to planning, we weren't off the bus in Budapest, our first stop, for more than three minutes making our way into the city center on foot when our tour guide noticed a door suddenly opening off the sidewalk to our right. As a young woman stepped out of an apartment building, he ushered us into this open atrium through a hallway inside a downtown, typical downtown Budapest apartment. We were inside this atrium, and we had a glimpse into what life was like from the inside. A door had opened for us. 
It wasn't on our morning agenda. It was not scheduled into our day at all. But here it was. We were seeing a piece of the culture of the city and the people that we had not been able to even anticipate. In that moment, we were no longer tourists, nor hardly interlopers. We were inside, looking inside. We were respectful, we were brief, but in those moments, we got a true sense of this wonderful new country that we were in. We had the whole day planned, and then unexpectedly, a door opened for us. It changed the feel of the day. In some ways, it changed the feel of the trip. It seemed to give us permission to explore and learn more freely, to be more open for new information. We had a perspective that we had not anticipated, and we came away with knowledge that we may have never otherwise gained. Class of 2019, I wish for you that along your journey, this journey that you have so well prepared for, I wish that a door opens for you. It may be at a time when you aren't really expecting it. It may be at a time when you really need it. It may be at a time when it's the only thing that makes sense. And it may be at a time when it makes no sense, but still seems right. I wish that a door opens for you, and I wish that you have the confidence the commitment and the curiosity to go through that door. Members of the class of 2019, my sincere congratulations to all of you. You'll be missed. The next part of our program belongs to the superintendent of schools, but I have not introduced him yet. Mr. Bernard has served as a superintendent of schools since 2014 has previously served as principal of North Reading High School, and prior to that, he was an assistant principal at Saugus High School, where he began his career in education as an English teacher. As his professional record indicates, John Bernard is a true educator. It's his life's work. His experiences are as vast as his capacity to remember students and their names. But maybe like me, you know Mr. Bernard not just as an educator, but as a leader in education. He's thoughtful, committed, he's caring, he's tireless, he is fair, he's honest. His level of personal investment is unmatched. He and I share a fun joke. We chuckle at times what his middle initial C stands for. Well, today it stands for complete. John Christopher Bernard is everything you want in a school leader. Mr. Bernard is on to the next phase of his journey for certain, but he hasn't left yet. It's my great pleasure now to introduce to the Superintendent of Schools, Mr. John C. Bernard. Thank you, Mr. LaPrat, and thank you all very much. <clears throat> Good evening, parents, grandparents, family members, friends, members of the school committee district administrators, North Reading High School faculty, and a special welcome and congratulations to the students of North Reading High School's class of 2019. <laughs> I share in the pride of all of us in attendance this evening as we celebrate this milestone achievement, your graduation from high school. It is tradition in North Reading that the superintendent of schools offer a charge to the graduates, and it is my intention to do so this evening, but first, I ask for your kind indulgence and allow me to offer a few thoughts and some well-deserved thank yous. The annual commencement ceremony is the most important event of our school year. We have many significant recognition events during the year across all of our schools and all our progression to this night. Tonight is the school district's reward for countless hours of work by students and adults over many years to help each student acquire the knowledge and skills needed to advance to the next grade and ultimately to graduate from high school well prepared for the future. For our graduates, it certainly is your reward, for this evening serves as an unofficial opening of the doors to all that our great country promises to each of you. Tonight is your moment, a celebration of a great achievement. It is the culmination of the years of hard work and the overcoming of challenges that you may have faced. It is representative of your collective greatness as a class of students. It is likely the final time that you will all be together. Enjoy the moment. I share in all of the personal joy and the deep sense of accomplishment that you are feeling at this moment. Your individual and collective achievements give great meaning to my work and for all of the adults of the North Reading Public Schools. 
I wish to take a moment to thank the teachers across our school district who have had such a significant impact on you. And I also thank all of the administrators, counselors, nurses, coaches, secretaries, paraprofessionals, cafeteria workers, custodians, bus drivers, and all of the many volunteers who have helped to give you the best schools possible and who have supported your many learning opportunities. I am appreciative of the school committee who are committed to, to your ultimate success in our school district. Each of our school committee members believes deeply that your high school diploma is a symbol that signifies academic excellence and personal achievement of the highest order. The citizens of North Reading are to be commended and thanked for their generosity, generosity of the funds needed to provide you with the resources necessary to offer a first-rate educational experience, and the generosity of spirit and support for all that they have given to you up to this point in your young lives. I extend my sincere thanks to all of the parents of our graduates for the support that you have given to the work of the North Reading Public Schools. Those of us <clears throat> who have the great pleasure of working with young people know very well what a wonderfully supportive parent network we enjoy in North Reading. It truly is very satisfying to have the honor of helping your children navigate their most formative years. And to our graduates, the class of 2019, I thank you. You have distinguished yourselves as a class with many talents in academics, athletics, the arts, in service to your school and community, and by being very good and decent young people. I hope that you can find satisfaction in knowing that you have concluded your time in the North Reading Public Schools, having left behind a legacy that will last for a very long time. <clears throat> it is also my hope that you can find a moment to express to your parents, your grandparents, other family members, and all of those who have guided you and helped you in your journey your gratitude for their assistance, support, and love. And now I wish to offer to you, in the spirit of honoring a decades-long tradition, the superintendent's charge to the graduates. This year, as I thought about what it is that I wish to share with you this evening, and the challenge that I wish to pose to our graduates, I found myself being particularly reflective. Over the years in my former role as the principal at North Reading High School, and now these last nearly five years as the superintendent of your school district, the inspiration for my remarks to the graduates has ranged from quoting great poets and authors to star athletes and other outstanding individuals. Ralph Waldo Emerson, dare to live the life you've dreamed for yourself. Robert Frost, travel the road not taken, it makes all the difference. Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of the shots you do not take. The lessons learned in kindergarten made famous by Robert Fulgham, put things back where you found them, live a balanced life and be aware of wonder. The words of a former president of Illinois Wesleyan University, Dr. Mina Myers, Jr., who each year at the university's commencement ceremony urged the seniors to go forth and do well, but more importantly, go forth and do good. The importance of completing the smaller tasks of life in order to realize greatness in the larger tasks ahead, as noted by Navy Admiral William McLaren, you must dare greatly, give people hope, never ever quit, and make your bed. Throughout the years, my goal has been to do my best to draw a connection between the words and actions of others and my hopes for the students who are in the audience, and such is the case for the class of 2019. I mentioned earlier <clears throat> that you give my work meaning, and over the years I have been inspired by the literally thousands of young people like you that I have met in my long career working in schools. I have found inspiration in where we are in the world today in the role that you as young people competent and with so much to offer, will play as you seek to find greater meaning and purpose in your lives now and in the future. Those of us who have been blessed to work with young people in schools know full well of your potential and your impact. In the years to come, it is my sense that you will come to hone further your skills and the impact that you undoubtedly will have will be far more than you might imagine sitting here right now this evening. As Mr. LaPrette said, I've worked in schools for 33 years as a high school English teacher, assistant principal, principal, and now superintendent. Never have I felt so strongly about the potential for young people impacting change in their local communities, across our great country, and in the world. We live in an age where it's easy to be cynical and negative and even hopeless, but the power of positivity and optimism is so great and so meaningful, and you are all in such a great and fortunate position to have such a wonderful impact on those you know and those that you don't know. You are shining examples of so much that is good.
As the Boston Bruins remain in cont contention for the Stanley Cup, it seems appropriate to invoke a hockey reference. If you've ever seen the 2004 movie Miracle about the 1980 USA men's hockey team's victory over Russia at the Winter Olympics, there is an iconic scene with the USA coach Herb Brooks telling his players, great moments are born from great opportunities. You are here tonight not by chance. You've worked hard to earn a place here in front of all of us this evening to receive our congratulations and our praise. You have an opportunity here tonight and in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead to do something really special to share with others and to learn from others. You have an opportunity to create great moments, for I am confident that you are very well prepared to make a difference in our world. This is my charge to you, create great moments, seize this opportunity. There is so much out there for you to take advantage of. Create the great moment. I am fully confident that each of you possesses the talents, skills, and the instincts to do wonderful things. This is your opportunity, this is your moment. I'm excited about the future for you. I'm excited about the future because of you. I thank you for allowing me to share in this special occasion with you this evening, and you have my very best wishes for much peace and happiness in your lives ahead. I am so very proud of each of you, and I have so enjoyed being a small part of your lives. May God bless you in the years to come, and may your futures be filled with the realization of all of your dreams and aspirations. Congratulations, and thank you.
one can be just like me anyway. Watch this Just like fire. Let's hear it for Notorious. Tremendous. It's my pleasure to introduce our first honor essayist and the student's innate intelligence. I'm reminded of every time I go to send her an email, S-M-A-R-T-E-L, Samantha Martell. Thank you, Mr. LaPratt. Hello, everyone. I would like to start off by giving a warm welcome to the family members, guests, teachers, and administration gathered here today to celebrate the graduating class of 2019. First, I must take a moment to thank the people who played a pivotal role in my high school career. To my parents and family members, thank you for supporting me through both academic and athletic challenges and for making sure I always had a ride home from school or sports. To my sister, Kylie, thank you for always listening and understanding when I ranted about my classes, for walking up the hill with me every morning of junior year, and for surviving those nine minutes of life without me. <laughs> to my teachers, thank you for providing me with the knowledge and tools I need to continue in my academic pursuits, for letting me sleep in some of your classes, and for reading us the daily notices sometimes. But most importantly, to my fellow graduates of 2019, thank you for spending these last four years with me and for being my teammates, classmates, and friends. Given my 11 seasons of high school running, I think it's only right that I also pay tribute to my running career. So thank you to my coaches who have taught me perseverance and augmented my love for running. In my opinion, these last four years for all of us can be compared to a cross country race. To begin, we all started this race together, but each runner has a strategy and pace that is right for them, and it's not always right for the runner standing next to them. Some may have started the race too fast, taking classes we thought would challenge us just the right amount, but needing to adjust and recover as the expectations grew, while others may have begun slowly, unsure of our training, before realizing that we had the ability to take on more extracurriculars or challenging courses. We soon broke into the groups we thought would help best pace us during our race, surrounding ourselves with positive friends determined to see us reach our own goals. We hit hills along the way, having to overcome both personal and academic struggles. Through the knowledge and strength we have gained throughout these four years, we were able to persevere through tough classes, standardized tests, and some failures. During these times, we leaned on each other for support resorting to glass group chats and spark notes for help with homework we could never have done by ourselves. But just as Coach Spinney taught me, the most important part of the hill is the top, where we must maintain the effort we put in to getting up the hill, even when the path in front of us becomes a little easier to navigate. Overcoming our challenges allowed us to try new things and reach outside our comfort zones, adapting our pace to the course in front of us. In addition to the hills we struggled through, we hit setbacks out of our control. Just as rain, wind, or humidity may ruin a good race, the weather seemed not in our favor for most of high school. For our first three years, snow days kept us in school till the end of June, rain ruined many chances at PRs and championship wins, and it even snowed for our junior prom. Just as runners wished for a break during their race, this year, when we wanted snow so badly we would refresh the snow day calculator every five minutes, we were granted only one day to rest before the final months of high school. During our run, we've gone through winding trails, turning in different directions and exploring how it feels to run our own course by joining new clubs and classes and making new friends along the way. And finally, today, 
we are all going through the same finish of the race, with family, friends, and faculty cheering us on from the sidelines, happy to congratulate us for what we've accomplished, and eager to see what we may do next with the training and practice we now have. We may forget most of the moments of the course, where we were too focused on the pain of the run or passing the person ahead of us to take in the beauty of the trees, but there will always be times to remember. We can leave the group chats, delete plus portals, and forget our web assigned passwords, but we will remember all of the championships we have earned, plays and performances we have put on, and the numerous times we have spent laughing together in the halls of our high school. Class of 2019, good luck in your future endeavors, and I hope that you're successful in whichever race you choose to run next. Thank you. I would now like to welcome the next honorary essayist and someone who I'm lucky enough to call my best friend, Molly Pfeffer. Okay, please bear with me if I start crying. Thank you, Samantha, you did amazing. Good evening, esteemed faculty and staff, Superintendent Bernard, Principal LaPrette, Vice Principal Hain, friends and family, especially mine, but most importantly, good evening and congratulations to the 182 graduates of the North Reading High School Class of 2019. In the months from when I was told I'd be speaking at graduation to now, I struggled a lot with choosing just what to say. After much reflection, I decided to start with one of my all-time favorite quotes, and I think you might recognize it. A wise man once said, first is the worst, second is the best. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding, of course, about the quote anyway. I really did struggle with writing this speech. I may never have a captive audience like this again, nonetheless one so incredibly important to me. On top of that, I'm only 18 years old and I have still yet to officially receive my high school diploma. I don't have some heightened view of life or the secret to success. I feel like a lot of the time, we fall into the trap of searching for complex answers to even more complex questions. However, it's often the simplest things in life that carry the most value. So today, class of 2019, I would like to take some time to consider one of the simplest things in life, walking. From our very first steps to walking at our graduation today, our legs have carried us faithfully from one place to another. And while there have been times where our legs become fatigued from the walking and we have been left gasping for air, like when we had to walk up the stairs from the first floor to the third floor, or even worse, up the hill, our legs have been there to support us in our journey. So my advice to you on this important day isn't profound. It isn't complicated. It isn't confusing, unlike most of high school. It's simple. When life presents you with the choice between taking the elevator or the stairs, I encourage you to walk up the stairs. Time passes by whether we want it to or not. It's on days like today, when we sit here on the turf, wondering how we became seniors so quickly, that it's appropriate to realize this and recognize the importance of living each moment to the fullest. Along the path to today, there have been days, for all of us, where the idea of taking the stairs has seemed pointless. Whether we have been busy, tired, or simply too lazy, the elevator has admittedly been tempting. It has also become increasingly not only appealing, but easy to fall into the rhythm of blind automation. We memorized the funky times our classes ended, we parked in the same spot every morning, and we got angry when someone parked in our spot that really wasn't our spot. In these ways and many more, we have been metaphorically taking the elevator, the easy way out. We have mindlessly pushed the button to the top floor, riding amongst others in awkward silence and wondering, have I ever seen a ceiling so interesting before? So as to avoid conversation. But look to your left and to your right and all around you. There are faces here in this crowd that we won't be seeing every day again. And that is why it's important that we take the stairs, that we enjoy the journey and do not become blinded by our destination. While it is sad to leave our family and close friends, I know that I'm extremely sad about this. It is equally upsetting to be leaving our acquaintances, our school friends, and our teachers. 
Next fall, we won't see the smiling faces of our grade in between classes, and we won't see our teachers every gold day. All we have left as a class, as a school, is right now. So stick around after the ceremony is over and talk to someone who you might not have otherwise. After all, there will be a day when you can't take the stairs anymore. When your legs are weak and you are left with no choice but to take the elevator. And it will be in this moment that you will be left wishing you still have the ability to take the stairs, reminiscing on all the missed opportunities to do so. So, class of 2019, take the stairs while you still can and enjoy it. Do things the hard way. Go out of your comfort zone and grow because of it. Don't be afraid to take risks and don't be afraid to fail in the process. Even if you fall, the stairs will still be there waiting for you to get back up and climb them. And while I can, I would like to take a moment to express the immense gratitude I have for some special people. Thank you to my parents for holding my hand as I learned how to walk and thank you for slowly letting go, pushing me to walk on my own. Thank you to my sisters, Melanie and Lauren, for dealing me, with me acting like a third parent and for letting me try to teach you how to walk. Mrs. Verdonk, thank you for teaching me that when my legs burn, it's not just because I'm out of shape. Thank you to Mr. Lane for showing me how to evaluate the velocity at which I walk up the stairs. And thank you to Mr. Dorval for teaching me how to take the derivative and integral of that. Thank you to Mrs. Dabrio for teaching me how to write about my journey and to Mrs. Cahill for teaching me how to do so en français. It has been a pleasure climbing the windy staircase of high school with you all, and I wish you only the best as you stand at the foot of your next staircase. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the final honor essayist, someone who always keeps me on my toes, Michael Tyrell. You know, this is about the time in graduation where your legs start to get restless and your mind starts to wander. Why can't they just hand out the diplomas already? Hey, I agree that sirloin steak at Strega Prime you're envisioning is sounding really good right now. And I promise, you know, with that steak sitting in my mind too, that this won't be a sermon or a monologue. I've actually taken some inspiration from your speech at the superintendent's luncheon, Mr. LaPrette, when you talked about Molly and I among 30 administrators. And this is true, uh, Mr. LaPrette's speech there was the shortest, and I, I must say it really gave the region a glimpse into his usually concise and short way of speaking we all know so well. <laughs> I'm only making fun, Mr. LaPrette. Uh, so thank you. So thank you, uh, Mr. Hain, Mr. LaPrette, Mr. Bernard, North Reading School Committee, uh, North Reading Public Schools, the rest of the community, and of course, the class of 2019 for offering me this opportunity, and let's get to it. I recently had a freshman email me asking how I, quote, leveraged my high school experience into getting into a tough college. Yes, leveraged. That's just not how it worked for me. It's not like when I first walked in the door, Mr. Bernard pulled me aside into a smoky back room, sat down in a big leather chair, and asked, all right, so the best we can offer you is valedictorian for 80% of your social life. <laughs> Deal. Walking in the door instead, I worked to create passion. You know, let's look at what we, as a class, have accomplished when passion was involved. Joe wrote a pages-long, well-worded manifesto the crying against the school administration. Joe, I hate to break it to you, but you actually wrote a persuasive essay on your own because you had passion for the issue. The class of 2019 group chat was filled with never-ending arguments and polls because we cared about what we were saying. Why? Passion. What about how defensive we got over our supposed parking spots? I swear, the pursuit of those that would dare take the unmarked parking spots that belonged to us in the mind alone was incredible. Or what about assassins? For parents, that's the game where we had to shoot each other with water guns. Countless people waited in bushes for hours, and Billy, after breaking his leg, <laughs> hopped his way to victory in a game where mobility means quite a bit. 
Zach must have waited by his phone for hours for Duncan to post on Instagram just to complain about getting out. And, and Duncan got so many calls from people arguing over the rules, he was ready to smash his phone to pieces. We created passion for this game and because of it, did things we never would have before. Clearly, as philosopher George Friedrich Hegel once said, nothing great in the world has ever been accomplished without passion. Then the question is, how can we harness this passion? There are really three ways, in, in my mind, and that's get inspired by others, have genuine passion, or create passion yourself. The first way, to find people in your life who give and share your drives, keep them close. You know, I just want to take a moment to thank those who've helped develop my passions. Bear with me, there's a few of them. I was selling mentions for $20 a piece. <laughs> Got to pay for college somehow. So, just wanted to start with my tennis teammates, Ryan, Seth, and Trevor, who always helped me reach new heights. And no, not just because we had to follow Trevor's lead of standing on his tiptoes in every picture. Trevor, I'm really sorry, but Ryan has about a solid foot on all of us anyway. Mr. Emerton, who had so much passion himself that he's not here, and instead flew to a different state for the sole purpose of reading thousands of essays on the same topic of US history. I think I'd be history after doing that. I wouldn't have an interest in politics if it weren't for Mr. Emerton's morning and post-class discussions that made me late for class every day. Why were you late? Oh, just your average political discourse. Mr. McIntosh and Ms. Dabrio, who helped me get inspiration for this speech by suggesting I open up fortune cookies. They even supplied me with a whole bag. What I must admit I forgot, however, is that after you open a fortune cookie, it doesn't just magically disappear and you're not going to throw it away. I mean, come on, they're, they're kind of good. So I guess I could say thanks, Mr. Mac and Ms. Dabrio, for my Wednesday midnight snack of about 100 fortune cookies. Dr. Daniel Downs for offering me unlimited opportunities to find and develop my technology skills. I'm gonna miss the late nights working on the tech plan and rollouts, leaving the building to a completely empty parking lot in winter darkness. Mr. Bernard, thanks for always encouraging me to take a step forward and being there to help me take it. When you wanted to develop an app, you approached me, obviously not knowing that I take about a year over the deadline to finish it. Apparently this is a theme for me, because I was also late to receive your award at student recognition night. <laughs> this district is going to miss your keen administration, personality, energetic passion for education, and genuine care for us students. I'd like to take just a minute to thank Mr. Bernard with a round of applause. <laughs> and of course, my parents, Neil and Shireen, my brother Ryan, and the rest of my family, who, yes, are proud of my accomplishments, but wish I'd mow the lawn once or twice. <laughs> but really, I owe you guys everything uh, in shaping me into who I am, and I just want to say thank you. So often we hear our parents, our mentors, our teachers, and our idols say, find your passion. The cliche never dies because it's true. Finding genuine passion is one way to succeed. However, not everyone finds their passion until much later in life. How many of you have been told by parents and teachers to find your passion when the chance is they likely haven't even found it themselves? I know my dad probably isn't passionate about taking conference calls at 3 a.m. in the basement. In most cases, you're going to need to drum up drive and motivation to do something that you have no passion for at all. Creating passion is kind of like the used car salesman. You know, in rare cases, if you look hard enough, you may find the perfect used car. This is genuine passion. If you toil and search for years, you may get lucky enough to find it. But more often than not, you'll get stuck looking at disappointing cars, doing something that's boring or you don't enjoy. This is where the used car salesman steps in. He'll explain away that scratch, or the 120,000 miles on the car as a few too many test drives. That extra zero in the price tag, that's, that's market value. And he'll play up the strengths of the car. It has a Bluetooth system. Oh man, look, real leather seats. This car belonged to John Voigt. Thank you to the parents, the teachers, and the one student who probably understood that joke. Uh, although these features may seem small, his focus on them will lead the car to seem better overall. This is what creating passion is all about. If you get stuck in an activity that is about as far as possible from your real interests, you have to find the small things in the activity that do seem interesting and focus on them. So okay, so reading about President Lyndon B. Johnson's Great Society isn't piquing your interest? Try focusing on you know, his crude personality or how he, and this is true, howled with his dogs. 
Class of 2019, Giacomo Casanova said, be the flame, not the moth. I'd add, but light the flame yourself. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak. In Class of 2019, we're going to do great things. It's been an honor and a privilege to be one of you. Thank you.
Your North Reading High School Band. And now it's a pleasure to introduce the 2019 class essayist, Abigail Griffin. Good evening, Superintendent Bernard, Principal LaPrette, Assistant Principal Hain, members of the school committee, faculty, guests, and fellow graduates. When I think back on everything that we, the class of 2019, have learned in the past four years, I have no doubt that North Reading High School has prepared my fellow graduates and I for whatever our future holds. Whether we are continuing our education, serving our country, or going straight into the workforce. Thank you to our teachers, parents, family, and friends for the dedication you've shown to us. Even when, as we grew into our adolescence, it was a difficult and sometimes thankless task. Thank you for everything you have taught us. I will remember the components of a cell, the way to rhetorically analyze a passage, the amendments in the Bill of Rights, and hopefully, I'll remember how to evaluate indefinite integrals, but there are no promises on that front. And we will use all this knowledge. It'll serve us well as we navigate through the next chapter in our lives. However, I know that there has been more to high school for all of us. In between the lessons on rotational motion and the citric acid cycle, NRHS has taught us life lessons that should not go unspoken. From our freshman year public speaking seminar, we learned how to speak loudly for what we believe in, even if our voices shake. Our words can help, heal, and humble, as long as we speak with honesty and conviction. We've learned that there's value in sticking our neck out for somebody or something just because we know it's the right thing to do. In physics, we learned that if your initial velocity and trajectory are just right, you can take the leap and build your wings on the way down. We have learned to improvise, to think on our feet, to be creative. Not everything goes according to plan, but we've learned to manage with what we have. We felt the fear and took the leap anyway. In our English classes, we read the words of great authors and poets, like John Donne, who said, no man is an island unto himself. Every man is a continent, a piece of the whole. All along, no matter how different or alone we have felt from our peers, We've all been part of this community, these 12 and a half square miles that we call home. We've lost friends, but we've made new ones too. And everything that has felt like it would seriously never end 
as. In history, we learned about the Mayans, the Medicis, the Manchu. The Mongol invasion of the Song Dynasty in the 12th century taught us the cultural isolation will never be the answer. We need to be accepting of people with ideas, values, and attitudes that are completely different from ours, because that is what encourages cultural diversity and productive intellectual discourse. In our math classes, well, I'm still trying to figure out that one. We've learned that there's quite literally more than one way to go about any problem, and sometimes there's more than one answer. We've learned that frustration and confusion can turn into success with a lot of perseverance. After long periods of mental fatigue, there are brief, ever so fleeting moments where we feel immense pride in ourselves. Moments that allow us to step back and look at that big picture people always seem to be talking about. In chemistry, we learn that our bonds don't just connect us. They define and distinguish us. We are individuals, but we are always better together. We felt the connection, the distinguishing joy rather, when we're staying up late working on a project that means the world to us, or waking up early on a Saturday morning with our teammates to seize the day. But perhaps most importantly, we have to thank our community. Everyone here today, the teachers, coaches, family, friends, and neighbors who have had a hand in raising us. We thank you for teaching us what home feels like. Wherever we are to go in this life, wherever we are to create a new nest, it won't change our roots. Make no mistake, we have these memories and these new lives to embark on because of you, thanks to you. Thank you for teaching us what home feels like. Between the flashcards and the PowerPoints, there have been life lessons all along, hidden in plain sight. As we look forward, full of excitement, to our futures, let us not forget to look back with gratitude to the people who have enabled us to sit here today. We have failed and tripped and stumbled, but now is the time to use our mistakes as lessons, to believe that the world is on our side, and to push ourselves to never stop learning. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Please join with me now in recognizing the 2019 scholarship winners. When each recipient, uh, please stand when his or her name is called. And I'd like to thank the community and its generosity for making all of these scholarships possible. The James R. Elward Memorial Scholarship, Brooke de Grande. Arthur A. Baresi Memorial Scholarship, Christopher Batchelder. L.D. Batchelder School Scholarships, Kelly Bratton, Joshua Zellickman. Joseph R. Bernard Memorial Scholarship, Andrew Genitazio. BNI BIZ Builders Scholarship, Travis Spencer. Kristen M. Callahan Memorial Scholarship, Michael Tyrell. James J. Chambers Memorial Scholarship, donated by family and friends, Christopher McCann. Chartwell's Nutrition Services Scholarship, Mark Potter. Eleanor C. Dell Scholarship Fund, Abigail Billado. Katie Vidala. Larry Dysart North Reading Girls Youth Basketball Scholarship, Casey McAuliffe. Fitzgerald Prize for Community Service in Memory of Kaylee and Roy Fitzgerald, Abigail Griffin. Betsy Gavoni Memorial Book Award, James Schilly. Stephen Gregory Memorial Scholarship, Matthew Selecki. Edith F. Holt Scholarship, Aidan Wyatt. Robert Hunt Memorial Scholarship, Matt Selecki. Ipswich River Community Course Scholarships, Anthony Casino, 
Trevor E. Wilson. David Jamison Memorial Scholarship, Casey McAuliffe. Frederick A. Kais Memorial Scholarship, Samantha Martell, Zachary Rinaldi. E. Ethel Little School Scholarships, Dante Centafanti, Katie Vidala. Anthony J. Lopret Jr. Memorial Scholarship, Nora Standell. Mighty Meredith Project Scholarship, Molly Pfeffer, Francis Walsh. Walter Miller Scholarship, Dylan Cole. Michael Mitten Memorial Scholarship, Abigail Delano. Moynihan Lumber Scholarship, Christina Lasden. North Reading Education Association Scholarship, Jordan Levitt. North Reading Girls Softball League Scholarships, Caroline Belinowitz, Abigail Carroll, Jessica Ferrazzani, Leah Ferrazzani, Kylie Martell, Haley Sanfi. North Reading High School Boys Lacrosse Boosters Scholarship, James Schilly. North Reading High School Hockey Boosters Scholarship, Stephen Pagluca. North Reading High School Parents Association Scholarship, Owen Carlson. North Reading Historical and Antiquarian Society Scholarship, Meredith Martin. North Reading Little League Scholarship, Phil Dardano President's Award, Andrew Genitazio. North Reading Little League, Harold B. Reynolds Memorial Scholarship, Matthew Selecki. North Reading Lodge of Masons Scholarship, Paige Rosenthal. North Reading Music Boosters Scholarships, Anthony Casino, Christina Lasden, Jessica Palazzolo, Benjamin Tenney, Laura Wagner. North Reading Republican Town Committee Scholarship, Caitlin Shevlin. North Reading Women of the Moose Scholarship, Anastasia Maria Spinelli. North Reading Youth Football League and Cheerleading Scholarships, Alex D'Ambrosio, Megan Lawler. North Reading Youth Hockey Scholarship, Christopher McCann, James Schilly. North Reading Youth Soccer Board of Directors Scholarships, Casey Robarts, Caitlin Shevlin. North Reading Youth Soccer Scholarships in memory of Janet Co Connolly O'Neill, Jillian Coveney. Frank L. Prusik Memorial Scholarships, Dylan Cole, Joseph McCarthy. Robert Ramsdale Boys Youth Basketball Scholarship, Matthew Selecki. Edward A. Sapienza Scholarship, Michael Sheridan. Bonnie Gay Symes Memorial Scholarship, Julia Zakular. Richard K. Smith Scholarship, David Tingley. James R. Stewart III Memorial Scholarship, Emma Valade. Tareli Born Scholarship Trust Fund, Jessica Palazzolo. Sarah Valenti Memorial Scholarship, sponsored by the North Reading Hockey Boosters, Joshua Zellickman. Sarah Valenti Memorial Scholarship, sponsored by the North Reading Lacrosse Boosters, James Schilly. The Todd Verdonk Memorial Scholarship, sponsored by, by the Diamond Club, Ryan Connor. Wayne and Catherine Welsh Memorial Scholarship, Ryan Landers. West Village Women's Club Scholarship Fund, Rita Hamwi. Congratulations, scholarship winners. And now, 
The following class of 2019 graduates have been awarded scholarships by the North Reading Dollars for Scholars. Students, please remain standing when your name is called, and my sincere thanks to the Dollars for Scholars Committee for your sincere efforts on behalf of our students. James Bartram, Caroline Belinowitz, Abigail Billado, Caroline Boucher, Anthony Casino, Brett Clark, Jillian Coveney, Brooke DeGrande, Sean Fagan, Molly Pfeffer, James Garnis, Charlotte Grant, Abigail Griffin, Rita Hamwe, Seth Hemley, Rachel Katkoff, Mary Madden, Samantha Martell, Abigail Martin, Meredith Martin, Mark Potter, Casey Robarts, Madeline Rutherford, Caitlin Shevlin, Matthew Selecki, Nora Standell, Carly Stringer, Kelsey Trevor, Michael Tyrell, Ryan Veneziano, Francis Walsh, your Dollars for Scholars scholarship winners. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Joseph Hain for the next portion of our program. Superintendent Bernard, Mr. Buckley, on behalf of the faculty and staff of North Reading High School, it is my great pleasure to present to you the following members of the class of 2019 who have satisfied the requirements of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the North Reading Public School System to receive their high school diplomas. Michael Joseph Tyrell. Molly Jordan Pfeffer. Samantha May Martell. Abigail Grace Griffin. Michael Alexander McCula. James Mark Schilly. Caitlin Ann Shevlin. Trevor Robert Wilson. Alyssa Crugnally. Ryan Patrick Landers. Abigail Hope Andre. Joseph David Artone. Sean Edward Ashness. Dylan Joseph Babcock. Ryan John Babcock. Gabrielle Rose Barker. James Vincent Bartram. Christopher Stephen Batchelder. Alex Hamill Beharel. Abby Isabel Belbin. Caroline Elizabeth Belinowitz.
Ahmed Amin Benafoun. <laughs> Abigail Louise Billado. Caroline Christina Boucher. Nathania Mary Brackenow. Kelly Elizabeth Bratton. Liam Christopher Buckley. Erica Jean Bergholzer. Jacqueline Marie Cadena. Katarina Daniela Capone. Matthew Jacob Capazzoli. Eduardo Felipe Cabanera. Owen Brian Carlson. Abigail Ann Carroll. Christina Nicole Carroll. Anthony James Casino. Dante Aldo Santafante. Brett Allen Pierce Clark. Crystal Ashley Cohane. Dylan Robert Cole. Ryan Joseph Connor. <clears throat> Chloe Elaine Copolis. Sydney Porter Corsetti. Gianna Rose Costa. Jillian Sume Coveney. Alex Richard D'Ambrosio. Jenna Mary D'Ambrosio. Chloe Ton Dang. Sydney Malone Davis. Francesca da Costa de Vargas. Brooke Cassidy de Grande. Hannah Elizabeth Delaney. Abigail Joy Delano. Christopher Alexander Deloayacono. Sophia Marie De Monaco. Mia Rose D'Onofrio. Peter Robert De Pisa. Avery Grace De Rosers. Joseph Martins De Santo. Michael Ronnie D'Estacio. Cole Owen Doak. Gustavo Franco Dominguez. Amelia Marie Donnelly. Sarah Ann Donahue. Derek Joseph Donahue. Joseph Paul Doolin. Natalia Perone Dos Santos. Connor Anthony Dyer. Cody Michaela Eicher. 
Jane Exley. Sean Thomas Fagan. Matthew Tower Farrow. Jessica Marie Ferrazzani. Leah Elizabeth Ferrazzani. James Taylor Garnis. Kayla Nicole Garrity. Patricia Garza. Riley William Garrier. Andrew Thompson Genitasio. Jessica Lee Gillis. Kylie Elizabeth Gorgani. Charlotte Mayjune Grant. Samer Jamal Hamdar. Rita Hamwe. Sean Richard Haynes. Justin Kurt Heinz. Seth Guerrero Hemley. Ryan Catherine Hunter. Madison Ryan Francis J. Abigail Spindler Johnson. Brady Kenneth Johnson. Paniotis Christos Calaris. Julia Leah Caligaropoulos. Rachel Hanano Katkoff. Shannon Noel Kelleher. Gretchen Elizabeth Laporte. Christina Foley Lasden. Megan Ann Lawler. Jordan Elma Levitt. Matthew Richard Lezon. Daniel Mark Lignos. Stephanie Lee Lignos. Keith Stansfield Lum. Haley Ann McIntyre. Duncan Alexander McNeil. Mary Margaret Madden. Kylie Ann Martell. Abigail Marie Martin. Meredith Grace Martin. Casey Mary McAuliffe. Christopher Richard McCann. Joseph Ryan McCarthy. Kaylin Grace McCormick. Ting Ting Bernadette McGovern. Caitlin Helen McGreal. Richard Allen McGuire III. Chloe Jane McKenna. 
Madeline Claire Mealy. Joseph Paul Mondello III. Julia Elizabeth Murphy. Kerry Nicole O'Brien. Bridget Morgan O'Neill. Stephen James Paliuka. Jessica Marie Palazzolo. Cassandra Nicole Pascucci. Matthew Thornton Penley. Jonathan Daniel Pike. Carlos Nicholas Plavins. Mark Cameron Potter. Jada Marion Tatiana Fernandez Ramirez. Nadia Evelyn Rawl. Dylan James Reardon. Tiffany Chanel Reese. Zachary Michael Rinaldi. Casey Johnson Robarts. Jessica Sarah Robert. Stephen Albert Robishaw. Paige Elizabeth Rosenthal. Brandon Richard Ruck. Madeline Bridget Rutherford. Nick Edward Sabia. Haley Isabella Sanfi. Matt Austin Sarno. Colleen Marie Scanlon. Kylie Alexis Schur. Olivia Saman. Nicole Marie Shaw. William Frederick Shaw. Michael Paul Sheridan, Jr. Connor Francis Simeon Smith. Daniel Lawrence Smith. Matthew James Selecki. Kyle Joseph Sovac. Travis John Spencer. Anastasia Maria Spinelli. Nora Kelly Standell. Jake Lincoln Stats. Carly Isabel Stringer. Evan Luke Sturdivant. Matthew David Supple. Benjamin Roberto Tias. Benjamin Matthew Tenney. David Keith Tingley. Kelsey Veronica Trevor. Anthony Joseph Troisi. Katie Ann Vidala. Emma 
Dorothy Valade. Ryan Sebastian Veneziano. Jake Edward Vercolin. Juliana Elizabeth Vitozzi. Laura Ann Wagner. Kevin James Wall. Francis Thomas Walsh. Madden James Warren. Jeremy Philip Wild. Trevor Edward Wilson. Peter Dalton Wood. Michael Scott Woods. Aiden Edwin Wyatt. Julia Lee Zacular. Ava Marie Zarella. Joshua Maxwell Zelikman. Ladies and gentlemen, families and friends, I present to you a truly outstanding group of students. These are the graduates of the North Reading High School class of 2019. Good evening, congratulations to the class of 2019. I am Mike McCullough, the class president, and next to me are my fellow class officers, Vice President Jay Shilley, Secretary Caitlin Chevlin, and Treasurer Trevor Wilson. I would like to express my gratitude in being able to serve as your class president for the best class to walk the halls of North Reading High School. On behalf of the four of us, as well as everyone receiving their diplomas today, we would like to express a huge thank you to the faculty and staff who made these four years an outstanding time. Thank you to all the parents and family members who have supported us not only in our high school years, but throughout our entire lives. We would also like to give a huge thank you to our class advisor, Ms. Dabrio and Mr. McIntosh, who have helped us out with awesome events this year and a prom that was well beyond our expectations. Your hard work does not go unnoticed and our senior class for years to come will be lucky to have you. Being able to serve as your class officers for the past four years have been an absolute pleasure and an honor. I'll miss all the great times we had here at North Reading and I would not trade the experience for the world. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Jay Shilley, class vice president. Although this moment may feel like the beginning of a journey, traveled primarily by yourself, just know that really it is not. The people that made these past 12 years so enjoyable will make all the years to come even more special. When you feel unaccompanied, just know that it is okay to turn back to the community that raised you to be the person you are now. You are the same person that's sitting here today, the person that's achieved so much. You've achieved a new standard for academic, athletic, and extracurricular success here at North Reading High School. 
So from this point forth, be extraordinary. But more importantly, be yourself, because you have already accomplished so much, and there still remains endless, endless triumph on all our paths to prosperity. We would also like to thank you, Class 2019, for making these past four years so enjoyable. From the many state championships, Cape Ann League titles, and drama accolades we won over our time here, I have no doubt that we were the best class to come through in RHS. We left not only the high school a better place than we found it, but also the community of North Reading. We'll have a lasting legacy on the town and school for years to come. On behalf of the class of 2019 and in, in conjunction with other graduating classes, I am very proud to announce that we will be donating funds to contribute to the large electronic sign to welcome visitors to this incredible place that is North Reading High School. And now, Caitlin, would you like to do the honors? <laughs> As the most phenomenal class to walk through the hallways of North Reading High School, I can confidently say we left our mark in a great legacy. Class of 2019, together, let's move our tassels from the right to the left to symbolize the transition into the next phase of our lives from high school students to graduates. <laughs> and now the moment we've all been waiting for. Congratulations, class of 2019, throw your caps. We did it. <laughs> Thank you. 